2020. Again, I bring greetings to you all from Hope Evangelistic Center in Richmond, Queens, New York. My name is uh, Pastor Prophet Renny Ragbeer. It's a good thing to be in the land of the living. The Bible says his mercies are brand new morning by morning. And we that are in the land of the living, we have, we have gotten new mercies today. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, all my children, I greet you all. All those that are viewing this uh, live feed and will be viewing this video from all parts of the world, I thank God for you all. I pray that your life will no longer be the same after you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all those that will be viewing this live feed and will be viewing it in the days to come, God. Lord God, wherever they are, God, Lord Jesus, you said the words that you speak, they are spirit and they are life. And Lord God, as I bring my flesh under the subjection of the Holy Spirit, uh, decree self in me that you will increase. You speak to me and through me. Use me as an oracle, Lord God. Uh, and as I speak, Lord God, you speak to me and through me, God. Let the words that I speak, let them be spirit and life, O oh God. Let your word fall in the good soil of the hearts of your people tonight. Break up the fallow ground, O oh God. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that no weapon that is formed against this word shall prosper. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you will heal tonight. You will deliver tonight. You will set free tonight, O oh God. You will bless tonight, Lord God. You will save souls tonight, O oh God. You will return the backside to you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of living God, that the words that I speak, Oh God, as I declare your counsel, as I declare your gospel, the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, lives will be changed, homes, oh God, will be restored, oh God, marriages will be restored, oh God, families will be restored, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to do something real quickly tonight. I just want to expound a little bit uh, more on the, what the Spirit of God said to me yesterday. As some of you may have seen the, the live video uh, that uh, uh, Brother Corey and uh, Pastor and I, we were doing some food uh, um, stuff, and I came into the church, and while I was walking through the sanctuary, uh, we have moved the chairs and put it against the wall, and while I was walking through the sanctuary to go towards the back, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. And while I was walking, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, Son, for the Egyptians you see today, you'll see them no more tomorrow. For I have stayed the plague. I've heard the heart's cry of my people. Thank you, God. And uh, I had to release that to you all, saints of God. And uh, I asked the Lord to give me some clarity and some understanding as uh, the evening went on, yesterday evening and last night and even today. I listened to the Holy Spirit and uh, I saw, I saw, and, and, and just let me just say this. I know many people of different political persuasions, uh, they have different views and stuff like that, but I'm not here to use gospel but to preach politics. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. I just want to lay that up front. So please don't say pastor is this and pastor is that. I am mm -hmm. for Jesus Christ. And for the truth and for holiness and righteousness. And I, I, I later during the day, I found out that uh, yesterday was a national day of prayer. I have forgotten about it. Well, pastor, you should know you're a pastor, you're a prophet. I, I, I knew in the morning, but I just forgot. I forgot. But my, my belief is every day is a national day of prayer. <laughs> Amen? For me. So, saints of God, I, I listened to what uh, took place in the Rose Garden yesterday because we have somebody from our congregation who were privileged to be there and he didn't take me I'll deal with that some other day but I listened to what took place and as I said I don't want you to get political with this I want you to stay with me stay focused stay focused on what the Lord is doing praise God and I started to listen to what the, what uh, took place in the prayer in the rose garden and how Christ was lifted up Jesus Christ was lifted up and then the, the spirit of the, of the Lord rose up in, inside of me and the Lord began to connect to what uh, he showed me yesterday and I, the prophetic word that I released and uh, let me say this to you all saints of God brothers and sisters and I say this because the spirit of God spoke to me uh, you all that know me I don't say this lightly 
And I want you all to hear this clearly. Don't go, po po don't go politics on me. Yesterday, what took place in the Rose Garden and the prayer that was lifted up in the Rose Garden in the name of Jesus, and because the leaders of this nation, I don't, as I said, I don't want you to go on the left side. Stay with me. Because of what was done, Jesus was lifted up Amen. by the leaders of this nation. It doesn't matter what they say or what they think. It, what matters is who they lifted up in the Rose Garden in that time, in that time. The Lord intervened, saints of God. You all must understand. God has heard the prayer and the cries of his righteous people. So when the leaders of the nation lifted up Jesus Christ, the plague has stayed, saints of God. Well, pastor, what is this you talk about the Egyptians? When the Egyptians were brought out of Egypt, when you read the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. You shall see them again no more. Understand what Moses was saying. Moses was saying, before you cross the Red Sea, the Pharaoh and the Egyptians were coming behind them. They were at the Red Sea. Moses and the children of Israel were at the Red Sea, at the shore of the Red Sea. And Moses, God spoke to Moses. And Moses told the people, don't fear. Hear what it says. I read again Exodus 14, chapter 14, verse 13. Fear you, ye not. Ye means you all. So I am saying it like this. Don't fear you all. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Salvation comes from a Greek word, for example, it means, it's sadzo, it means to be made whole, to save, to heal, to deliver. So salvation, salvation came through Jesus Christ. So we have already been healed, delivered, set free from any bondage and any captivity that the enemy had us in captivity or bondage. We have already been set free through the work of Jesus Christ because his work is finished. And, uh, but we, it is not automatic, uh, it is all, what Jesus did, uh, it, it is real, but we must confess it and walk, out, walk it out. So saints of God, Pharaoh was coming behind the church of Israel, and Moses was at the, at the Red Sea. And God spoke to Moses, uh, Egyptians, the Egyptians in that scripture represents, uh, for example, Pharaoh represents a type or a shadow of, uh, of the adversary, of Satan. The Egyptians represents the demonic, the demonic spirits, for example, that held the church of Israel in captivity, in bondage, in oppression, in slavery. And saints of God, uh, without going in depth, believers, the saints of God, if they have not come to the understanding that the, the enemy is using this pandemic as with, with a, he has brought a, a demonic force in it and through it, saints of God. And I, I don't want to go too deep into it because many believers would not understand some demonic uh, principles and, and so forth. But the enemy is using this pandemic with demonic forces, saints of God. Why it is it is so quick to attack the body? Spirits like bodies. Mm. Jesus, the Bible says that when Jesus came on the shore, the man, the gathering, the man of the gathering, the man that had, when he asked the man that broke the chains and lived in caves, he asked the man, the spirits that were in the man, he said, what is your name? They said, we are legions. And they begged Jesus not to cast them out, not to send them into the dry place, not to send them to the abyss, but they beg him to go into the pigs. The demonic spirits need bodies. That's why Jesus said, when a spirit, when an unclean spirit leaves a body, it goes to dry places, seek and rest, find it none. It comes back and find the house garnished and swept clean. And he takes seven other spirits stronger than himself. And they take up a bowl and the last thing of the man is worse than before. So there's a demonic there's a demonic spirit uh, behind uh, this virus, saints of God. And there are many believers that are mature, that they're not drinking milk, but they're eating meat. They will understand what I'm saying. I don't want to go into depth to confuse the, 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 the lambs. 
the, 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 the believers that are drinking milk still. But this has a demonic spirit behind it. So the Egyptians you see today, you see them no more. Why? Because they were drowned in the sea, saints of God. The children of Israel, just like you and I, brothers and sisters, uh, we have been saved by the blood of the Lamb, just like the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 12. They were saved by the blood of the Lamb that was placed on the lentil and the doorpost, saints of God. Now when the dead angel passed, uh, the dead angel passed over. That's why Passover means to jump past or to pass over. The dead angel passed over the whole homes of the children of Israel, the, the Hebrew people. So saints of God, we apply the blood of Jesus Christ with our confession of faith. Revelation 12 and verse 11 says we overcome the enemy, they overcome the enemy, they defeat the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we didn't, we don't love our life to, unto death. So if you love your life, saints of God, yeah, if you can't, uh, you can't be the soul that God called you to be. You can't love your life. You don't love your life because why? We have to get to the place, for example, we value life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I like have to correct myself. We value life. We don't take life for granted. But we as believers have come to the place or should come to the place where we understand that we are just passing through. This earth is not our home. Heaven is our home. We have a heavenly home, saints of God. We are passing through. You and I are passing through. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away, saints of God. Not one judge, not one title, not one verse, not one word of what God spoke will pass away, and but heaven and earth will pass away. Everything on earth will be burnt up with fire, saints of God. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. This is not our home. We are passing through. We are, as the scripture says, we are aliens. We are passing through. I'll, I'll go a little deeper with it, a little more. The Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea. So they, the children of Israel were saved by the blood, but it is as though the enemy was still coming after them. You have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been redeemed. The Bible says that we are not our own. We have been bought with a price. You have been bought with a price. That price is the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, saints of God. You have been bought with a price. That's how valuable you are. Don't let me hear none of you all that are children of God, that, have been, that has been created in an image and likeness of God, say you're not valuable. You are not valuable in the kingdom of God. Yes, you are valuable. The human beings or the next person may not see or may not know your value but God knows your value you are valuable you have the spirit of God in you brother or sister you are valuable you work more to God than you think than you imagine so you don't give up the fight you don't give up your life you your emotion thank you Holy Spirit I just felt this in my spirit if anyone that would that that is viewing this live read or that would be viewing this anytime in the future and you are contemplating suicide please reach out to this ministry please reach out to somebody if you can't talk to nobody you call this office and leave a message and we will leave we can't answer the phone right away we'll get back to you or you send us an email or send us something the office number is 929-218-7122 you reach out to this house. This is a house of hope. Uh, you don't have to give up the fight. Uh, yes, there are times, uh, I understand. Some, many say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm going through. I may not know what you're going through. I may not understand what you're going through. But I know someone uh, who understands. Uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, because he was touched with the feeling of your infirmities. Uh, the chastisement of peace uh, was laid upon him. Uh, and by his stripes, uh, you were healed. You are healed. God is able to heal you. God is able to restore you. Don't give up, uh, saints of God, because God didn't give up on us. He didn't give up on us. Yes, he saw man was in a sinful, sinful state, but he didn't give up on us. Wow, I'm almost half an hour already. Praise God. So the children of Israel, they were saved by the blood. They were delivered from death by the blood, just as we are delivered from death, eternal damnation by the blood of Jesus. 
But now they had to be separated by water. That's why, excuse me, God opened the Red Sea. That's why we, we baptize, we are baptized, we follow the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are baptized in water. That is a commandment that Jesus gave. Some said thief on the cross and stuff like that. That's, that's for that time. That was for that man on the cross. But we have to follow the commandment that Jesus gave us to be water baptized. So the children of Israel were separated by water. Understand, saints of God, the analogy in the, with the children of Israel being separated by water. Understand, saints of God, the children of Israel, they were saved by the blood of the Lamb. They were delivered from death. But now they had to be separated by water. So God opened the Red Sea and he caused all the Egyptians, including Pharaoh, to be drowned. All the chariots and the horsemen, they were, to be, they were drowned in the Red Sea, saints of God. When you go to the ocean, when you go to the lake, when you go to the stream, when you go to the pool, and you, do, you get water baptized in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, you, and the saints of God, the old man is buried. We are buried with Christ, saints of God, and you rise up the new man. Uh, saints of God. So the children of Israel, they were delivered by the blood of the Lamb. They were separated by the Red Sea, by the water, by the baptism in the Red Sea. Saints of God. A type or a shadow of water baptism. And God killed all the Egyptians, and including Pharaoh, in the Red Sea. And you must be standing at your Red Sea, for example, like how the children of Israel was standing at the Red Sea. And you might just be saying, do you know I had it good when I was, wasn't saved? Before I gave my life to Christ, I had it good. I had it made in the shade, but now I'm in the light. And I see like all hell is breaking loose. And I don't know what else to do. I can tell you what else to do. Well, all you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord. But the word of God says that in a call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In a call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Cry out to him, saints of God. Call upon his name. Yes, he will hear and answer you. And he will show you great and mighty things that you know not offer. Brother or sister. And I said to you all yesterday that the plague has been stayed. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 25, and you all can read that. I've just given you one verse. 2 Samuel chapter 24. David committed a sin by numbering Israel, by taking a census. And if God did not want him to do that, and he caused a plague to come upon the church of Israel, and 70,000 men died. And uh, the plague, the only way the plague was stopped, stayed me stopped, was when David bought a place and built an altar. And here what it says in verse 25, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, the last verse in chapter 24, 2 Samuel. And offered burnt offerings, so the Lord was entreated for the land. And the plague was stayed from Israel. You have to understand. When, when, we, when leaders, the leaders of the nation begin to exalt God. And begin to put Christ first. Uh, make, let Christ be center of uh, all everything. And uh, let, uh, just like a believer, Christ must be the center of our life. Saints of God, brother and sister. The earth revolves around the sun. We have come from the earth. We have come from the ashes, from earth. God made us from the earth. So we, our life is supposed to revolve around the sun, Jesus, uh, the son of God. So, so we, don't, we must not expect uh, Jesus to revolve around our life. Well, I'll slip Jesus in. Uh, one Sunday a month, I'll slip Jesus in my life. Uh, one Sunday a month, uh, I will find my Bible and I will blow the dust off uh, and I will come uh, and I will open my Bible once a month. Uh, I will go once a month to church and pray and say to God, church uh, is not once a month. Uh, church is a lifestyle because we are a church. Uh, we are in called 
called ones. We are the ones that God has separated, saints of God. He has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he has set our feet. He has set your feet upon a rock that is higher than you and I. And that rock is Christ. And that rock is Christ Jesus. And in Christ, the solid rock we stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So saints of God, Christianity is not once a month in or once a week. Christianity is a way of life. We have been delivered by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. And we have been separated by water baptism. And we have the Holy Ghost in us. And some of you say, well, Pastor, I don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit with me and in me. I know I have the Holy Spirit. But I don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You need to seek for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to desire it more than ever. I'll share this with you real quickly. I, I, when I got saved, I desired the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard everybody speaking in tongues in the church. And I felt a little bad because I didn't speak in tongues. And I started to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I started to look at myself and I started to condemn myself because I wasn't getting it. And uh, when I stopped seeking it, in this sense, hear me, that I surrendered it to God, it, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit in a late night prayer in the church I got saved in. While the elders and the mothers there were praying. I, I had given it up to God. And I understand as, as saints of God what, what the word of God says. Jesus said it like this. The earthly fathers, they know how to give good gifts. How much more your heavenly father will give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you are to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You are to seek it. You are to desire it, uh, saints of God. So it will take something from you. Just because you ask God one time uh, for the, to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, uh, Saints of God, now, now understand, there's the gift of tongues and so forth. The gift of tongues and the gift of interpreting of tongues is something different from the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, okay? There are a gift of tongues and, and that's different. So you are to continue to seek the Lord. Because Jesus is the one that baptizes his children with this, the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said like this, sir. He's the one, he says, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming greater than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And fire, that fire burns inside of you. That fire does not grow dim. That fire doesn't cause you to grow lukewarm or to grow cold. Saints of God, that fire in you continues to burn because the Holy Ghost inside of you is a fire of God that push was burning when Moses, when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, the bush didn't burn, but the bush was on fire. You are like a bush, you are like a bush, you are like a tree, you'll be on fire for God, but you will not be burned out. You'll be burning for Jesus Christ because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ah, you might just need to tarry in Jerusalem. But Pastor, what do you mean? Go to Jerusalem? No, no, not literally Jerusalem. But you might just need in this time to spend some time in waiting on God in the upper room, in your secret place and pour yourself to God. Repent of all your sins, past, present. What you remember, what you can remember, you repent. Just make your calling election sure. I say it like that. You might be forget what you did. If the Holy Spirit uh, may remind you sometimes of what you did, and just repent before God, pour it before God, pour it your heart before God. If there's unforgiveness in your heart, uh, you, 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 you forgive. Uh, you forgive those that have done you wrong and you forgive yourself. Uh, and some, of, some believers blame God. They need to forgive God. They need to forgive themselves for blaming God for some stuff that happened in their life. And you need to forgive yourself also. Many believers blame themselves and hold themselves in condemnation and in captivity for things that have gone wrong in their life. You need to forgive yourself also. And say to God, God, I say this without anything in my heart because I heard what the Spirit of God said. 
The Lord has heard the cries of the righteous people in this nation of America. God has heard the cries of the righteous people of the world. Saints of God, in the book of Genesis, let me see, did I make a note of it? Yes. I made a note of it. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. This will be part of the message. And this is my introduction. In Genesis chapter 18, the Bible says, God says, how can I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? And I hear many people say, well, uh, Pastor, nobody knew what was coming. This happened by surprise. Let me say this to you all children. God does not allow something to happen by surprise. For example, God gave me this topic. And I'm not exalting me, okay? I'm exalting the Holy Spirit. I'm exalting Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the Holy Ghost gave me this message. You have been anointed with victory for the battle. And, and it shows us wearing the Roman soldier uh, armor. It shows us clothed, being clothed with the whole armor. And the messages that I have been preaching to, to this house uh, is to prepare yourself, uh, is to stir you up, uh, is to bring you to the place to know who you are, uh, who and the, the, the authority that you have, and the anointing that you have, uh, and to walk in authority, and to walk in the power that God gave to you to walk in, and to be ready for the battle, because you have been anointed with victory for the battle. And I knew God was preparing us for a battle. The battle, saints of God, is a battle to stay with God. It's a battle to stand and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's a battle to stand on the ground on the rock. Because when trouble comes, when the storms arise, when the flood comes, when the rain begins to fall, and when the foundation begins to shake, when that rock, saints of God, when the when the storms try to shake the rock, shake Jesus inside of you, you must stand strong in your faith. Saints of God because God called us to walk by faith and not by sight. God called us to see with the eyes of faith that we have we will see the victory. You will see the victory. And God says in Genesis chapter 18 that how can I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? And he said to Abraham, I'm about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's where Abraham was an intercessor. Abraham was a great intercessor in the Bible. That we see Abraham begin to intercede for Solomon, Solomon Gomorrah. We see Abraham begin to intercede from 50 and he went all the way down to 10. Abraham began to intercede, and I, I make a note of it. He began to intercede from 50 to 45 to 40 to 30 to 20 and then he stopped at 10. So Abraham, in that position, because what God showed him, he began to beseech God for the righteous, to save the righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. And because of Abraham's relationship with God, Abraham was able to bargain with God. God, will you do this? And that's fair, saints of God. In this time and in this season, you check your relationship with God. Make sure you're in right standing with God. Make sure, saints of God, yes, we may have weakness in the flesh and so forth, but make sure that you are laying before God and you're beseeching God for his deliverance and for his mercy to set you free. Make sure that you are not letting sin have dominion over you and that you are surrendering to God. And Abraham was in a position because of his relationship with God to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. He went to 50, he went to 45, he went down to 40, he went down to 30. Uh, let me just read it correctly so I don't mess up. 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. And he stopped. Now I want you all saints of God. You righteous mothers and fathers. You righteous uh, grandmothers and grandfathers. That's the right. That's the relationship you have with God. That you can grow up here about the daily anointing of the Spirit of God. You righteous mothers. You righteous grandmothers. 
you righteous grandfathers, you righteous fathers, you righteous son and daughter. The Bible says in James, the book of James, uh, chapter 5, uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, Saints of God, righteous mean right standing with God, right believing, right thinking, right living. You are the righteous of God. Uh, the Bible says Abraham believed God and he was come on him unto righteousness and he was called a friend of God. And Abraham, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm seeing it coming together. That Abraham was called a friend of God. And Abraham was able, because of his relationship, you don't really disrespect your friend. Because of his relationship with God, he was able to bargain with God. In the sense, intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham, that's why we must make sure our calling and election sure in Christ. That we can go and bargain for, to, with God for our unsaved or our backslidden children and loved ones that are out in the world that are held captive by the devil and by his demonic demons. <clears throat> but look what Abraham did. <clears throat> now his nephew Lot was down there in Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now his nephew Lot and his wife and his children and, his, and, and Lot's daughter's husbands were down in Sodom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Abraham stopped at 10. And look what happened. God sent two angels to bring Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you as a, as a parent or you as a grandparent or a righteous man or woman, you want to go yourself and you want to bring your loved one out of the pig pen that they are in. And you don't understand that there are principles in intercession and so forth. That there are times that you don't have to be there, right there with them. You don't have to run to pull them out. You pull them out with your prayer. You pull them out with your love. You pull them out with your patience. You pull them out with your faith. You pull them out with your hope in God. Through your prayer and your intercession. And saints of God. And you are, thank you, Holy Spirit. And I sense in the Spirit, a mother, you have been talking to that child. And I, the first one I saw was a mother talking to a son. And there were mothers that are talking to their sons. And I, after that, I saw mothers talking to their daughters. I'm dealing with the mothers. I don't know, it's like Mother's Day already. And I saw mothers talking to their sons first and mothers talking to their daughters. And now I see fathers talking to their children. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just say this before I go further. I just feel this in my spirit. The Bible says, God is sending Elijah, Elijah in the last days. For example, in Malachi, the Bible says, Malachi chapter 3, God sent Elijah, the spirit of Elijah was upon John the Baptist. Why the spirit of Elijah was upon John the Baptist? John the Baptist had an unfinished faith. John the Baptist didn't mix with mince words, saints of God. And that's why, saints of God, many ministers are afraid to preach the truth of the gospel. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but through the Son, Jesus. But through Jesus. And we have to preach Jesus and Him crucified. We have to preach the cross of Jesus Christ. We must preach the blood of Jesus Christ. We must not water down the gospel and miss the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up here, I'll draw all men unto me. And that's why we must lift up the G of the name of Jesus uh, wherever we go. Whatever, however, we are saints of God, whatever we are facing, we must lift up the name of Jesus. I just fell this in my spirit. Let me help you all to understand why did God say, I'm sending Elijah in the last days. Yes, we know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Why did John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah? Elijah, saints of God, stood against idolatry. Elijah, he says that John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah, will turn the hearts of the fathers 
back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. God is calling on the fathers. It's not fathers there yet, but God is calling on the fathers to turn their hearts towards the children. And God is calling on the children to turn their hearts towards the fathers because the fathers are the ones that are supposed to be the priest of their house. And the man, the fathers have left their place and they have put the woman, uh, the mother in the place uh, to stand in the gap uh, for the household. So men, those men that are listening to my voice, uh, rise up, uh, stand up uh, and take your rightful place uh, in your home and in your house and in the kingdom of God. You have to understand, men, when you decide to take a stand as the priest of your house, uh, as Joshua said, Joshua 25 and verse 15, I believe it is. Check for me. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Saints of God. Men, let me just help you all to understand this and I go back. When, when you make a stand or when you decide to take a stand, do you know who backs you up? And I hear you, woman is boss. No, yes, woman is boss. But the man with the pepper sauce is boss. Amen. Praise God. Say to God, when, when a man, a father, a young man decides to say, you know what? I'm going to stand in the rightful place of the priest of my house. It's not for, the man, for he, he wants, must, the woman must come and worship him. No. They are equal. But their level of authority is different. They are equal. They are one. They have become one. But their level of spiritual authority is different. And the man is the head. But their level of authority is different. Although they are equal. Although they are one. And so men when you decide to take your rightful place as a priest of your home. The woman might make more money than you. But that's not for the woman to hold over your head. And so forth. Uh, God backs you up, man. That's the point I want to get to. God backs you up, man. Man, God backs you up uh, when you decide to take your rightful place uh, as the priest of your home uh, and teach your children the way of the Lord. You say, Pastor, it's too late. Uh, that you are not dead yet because you are listening to my voice. Uh, and saints of God, as long as there's life in you, there's hope for you in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is not too late. Uh, because when you make that decision to bend to be the priest of your home, God, God, the creator of heaven and earth, uh, the creator of human, of man, uh, they backs you up. God backs you up. Amen. Let me come back to the, to the mothers. Mothers, I saw you've been beseeching your sons uh, a woman, mothers, you've been beseeching your daughters in the way of the Lord and to tell them what is right. And you say, I hear, it, I hear you all, mothers, uh, in the spirit. Uh, it's not Mother's Day yet, uh, but God knows every day is Mother's Day, all right? For every day is National Day of Prayer. We thank God for that. So, mothers, uh, I saw in the spirit, uh, you've been talking to that son, you've been talking to that daughter, mothers. And it seems as though your voice uh, is falling on deaf ears. Uh, it seems as though, and you're saying by like, the head hard, like they're hard of hearing. Like they can't hear what I'm saying. I don't need to be able to hear what you're saying because they try to shut you out. Uh, you may need to stand still now. You may need to zip it by speaking to them directly. And yes, you may need to unzip your mouth uh, and unzip your heart before God uh, in your prayer closet. Uh, and let your prayer go forth, saints of God. Let your prayer Pray go forth, mother. Mothers, I'm calling on you all. I'm calling on you all, mothers and grandmothers. Ah, uh, let your prayer go towards God. Uh, let your prayer go to God. Uh, let your prayer send up to God uh, as a sweet smelling savor for your sons uh, and for your daughters, uh, for your grandsons uh, and your granddaughters uh, and your family. Mothers, God will hear your hearts cry. The name of Jesus. I speak it, I declare it, I come in agreement with the mothers that are praying for the children and their loved ones in their homes. Those mothers, I come in agreement with them tonight, God, in the name of your son, Jesus. And I believe by faith that they will see the victory. They will see the victory. They will see the victory. They will see their son saved. They will see their daughters saved. They will see their sons and their daughters come back to God. Surrender to him. Amen. They will see him delivered. 
they would see them healed, delivered, and set free by the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. For it's not by might, nor by your power, but it's by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost went and brought the prodigal son back to his house. And I just fell out of my spirit. I see it, mothers. Mothers, I, I, I just felt in my spirit, mothers, that, ah, thank you, Jesus. You all have been crying out to God in this season. And thank you, Holy Spirit. And the Lord says he have not forgotten those of you mothers that has been crying out to God for your spouse, your husbands. The Lord says, I have not forgotten that you have been crying out for your spouse. And mothers, the Lord have heard your hearts cry. The Lord have heard your hearts cry. You stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For those demons that have your loved ones bound, they will be destroyed. They will, your children will be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will not have to go directly to where they are or where they are going, but you will send the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will soften their stony hearts. Uh, the whole be uh, thank you tonight, God. God, in the name of Jesus, uh, I declare tonight uh, that those hardened hearts uh, of those sons and daughters, uh, those hardened hearts uh, of the, those mother's spouses uh, or those women's spouses, uh, I declare that their hearts uh, will be softened. Uh, you'll remove the heart of stone uh, and give them a heart of flesh, Lord God. In the name, their conscience uh, will come alive. Uh, and Holy Ghost, you will speak to them. Uh, and they will heed your voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Mothers, don't weep no more. Weeping may endure. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning, said the Lord. I can the rabosari vansina. For have not I said unto you, my woman, my children, have not I said to you, for you bore them in pain. Have not I said to you that I am your keeper, I am your healer, I am your deliverer. Have not I said to you that I will be with you even unto the end. For I will leave you nor forsake you, said the Spirit of God. Oh Lord, I don't know if I'll get to my message with this long introduction. Praise God. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Pastor, you want me to close? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it in. Praise God. Saints of God, when, when, when David offered sacrifices to God, Offerings, burnt offerings to God. He entreated the Lord and the plague was stopped. Your prayer, the Bible says, our prayer go up to God as a sweet smelling savor. The Bible says, the God dwells, he inhibits the praises of his people. And as the praises go up, the blessings come down. Let me say this to you all children. Any, anybody can praise God. Yes, we all should be praisers. We are thankful. We are grateful. Lord, I thank you for this, God. I thank you for life. I thank you for this. I praise your name for this. I thank you for giving me that raise. I thank you for opening a new job. I thank you, Lord God, for provision, Lord God. But saints of God, there are true worshipers. The word of Jesus said like this. God is a spirit. And God seeks true worshipers to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. He said, for they that worship the Lord must worship the Lord in spirit and truth. For God is a spirit. And he seeks such to worship him. True worshippers, uh, saints of God. Do you know true worshippers? Uh, they either don't have, they come before God uh, and they say, God, you're good. Even if they don't have, they say, Lord God, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for bringing me out. I thank you, Lord God, for providing for me. That's what true worshipers are. They may not have a saints of God, but they worship God because of who he is. He's God. He's God Almighty. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Tiskanu. He's a Shaddai. He's God Almighty. He's a Bram of Gilead. He's a rock of salvation. He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's our sun and shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing with he with all from us as we walk upright in him. He Ramosa. He Kanda Ramosa. I see a victory. I see the victory. I see the victory. See the victory. Saint of God. For those devils you see today, 
You'll see him no more. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John 8, 36, For whom the Son set free is free indeed. All right, let me just finish with what I saw concerning the rose garden and the prayer and whatever. Let me just finish with that. Some of you still didn't get. After that short message I gave you all yesterday, and then I saw what happened in the rose garden, the prayer and so forth, the Spirit of God came upon me. And there's a shift, there was a shift in the atmosphere in America, in the United States of America. There's a shifting in the world because of the righteous people that are crying out to God. And God said to Moses, to, to, to Abraham, if I find ten righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah, I'll save the city. But do, do you know what happened? When the angels went down to bring out, bring out Lot and his family, look what happened. Abraham knew. Abraham knew how to intercede. Lot and his wife, too, and his two daughters were saved, right? And Lot wife turned back. I'll talk about that in a moment. So this Bible says that Lot has daughters, and their daughters had husbands. So it means to say, saints of God, Lot came out with his wife and his two daughters. That's four, four people. So then there were six people that were missing. Those six people means to say that Lot had three other daughters with husbands. So when Lot went to the husband and tell the husband, we are coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't listen to Lot because why? Lot should have lead a better example to his family. So they didn't pay attention to Lot. So Lot and his Lot, some of Lot's daughters, and their husbands decided to stay. So Abraham knew that there were 10 of his family down in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the Bible says, God remembered Lot because of Abraham. Ah, those of you that are righteous, God's righteous people, God will remember your family because of your righteousness. God will remember you all, your children, your families, because of your righteousness, because of your prayer, because of your faithfulness, because he calls us a friend. And Lot, sons-in-law, and, and their wives, which was da uh, Lot's daughters, three daughters, with three husbands, six of them didn't come out. But the wife came out, the husband came out lot, and his two daughters. And Jesus said this like this, remember Lot's wife. Understand what happened. Some of you need to remember Lot's wife. After she was brought out, she decided to turn back. She decided, and some say, well, she, she, she was involved in an in a illicit lifestyle, in an in alternative lifestyle. No, she had daughters down there, and she has sons-in-law down there. And, uh, and, and she allowed her emotion that God was bringing her out to turn back. She allowed herself, she, the life that she had over there, she, she, she thought that, oh, I, you know, I, I le I'm leaving all I know. I'm leaving all my stuff. And she turned back and Jesus mentioned her. She, he said, remember Lot's wife. Remember that after Lot's wife came out of Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah, she turned back. I'm calling upon you all, brothers and sisters. Remember where God brought us out from. Yes, we may say to ourselves, some of us may look back when trouble comes and the trial comes and say we had a good life in the world. No, 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 no. It may be good in the world, but saints of God, we were headed to hell in a coconut shell. Saints of God, but God saw us because of his love, because of his unchanging, unending love. What shall separate us from the love of God and saints of God because of God's love for you and I? He brought us out and he says, you know what? I know her by name. I know him by name. I'm bringing them out and I'm setting their feet upon this rock, upon me, upon Christ. And he's, he's going to hide you in the cleft of his rock. On his side. And saints of God. I'll have to preach the message on the day.
Praise God. Jesus said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And he gave gifts to men. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. They, he, Ephesians 4 and verse 8 says, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And he gave gifts to men. The gifts he gave, for example, uh, in that scripture says, The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And uh, he gave gifts to men. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. That's why in Isaiah 61 and Luke chapter 4, when Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon him because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The preaching of the gospel break bondages. The preaching of the gospel. That's why, saints of God, you don't have to wait until I lay hands on you or until somebody lay hands on you to be set free. The preaching of the gospel will set you free. The Bible still said like this, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. For who the Son set free, for whom Jesus set free is free indeed. You need to receive your freedom in Christ. But the Bible says, where the Spirit of God is, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Lord God, set your people free in the name of Jesus. Because why? You are standing still and you will see the salvation of the Lord your God. Praise God. And in closing, preach the message another day. Praise God. I'll just touch it for a moment. Praise God. But I just need to read this to you all. And I wrote this down. And I'll read it to you all. I feel... I, 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 I wrote it down today and I kept it. And I said if the Spirit of God speak to me, I will read it. Now, what I, I want to read this to you all. Yes, I, I needed to rewrite it down because of the Spirit of the Lord was downloaded in my spirit in my study time and, and my devotion time. This is what the Lord says. Hear, hear what the Spirit of God says. Today, it was, uh, I wrote down the time this morning. It was 10.23 a.m. And hear what the Lord says. Just open up your hush to receive it. For I... For thus saith the Spirit of the Lord. For I will not let the wicked one prevail against my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against her, for she is mine, saith the Holy Spirit. The wickedness of man and his evil devices will increase, and he will grow stronger and stronger in his own eyes. But be not deceived, I am not mocked. For whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he be, says the Holy Spirit to my church. I have brought you, I have bought you with a price. I have redeemed you because I love you. With, a, with an everlasting and an unchanging love. Let not your hearts be troubled, ye my children. For though you will have trouble on the earth, I will not let you be overcome with evil. For behold, I have given you dominion in the earth. Have not I given you of my spirit? And said to you, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Prepare yourselves, ye my people, and rent your hearts, not your garments. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh said the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And there is one more thing that I, 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 I put separate as the Lord spoke to me and I said, Lord, if you want me to say it, speak to me. And I just feel in my spirit the Lord said it, say it, say it. Yet, yeah. blow the trumpet in Zion, my, ye my servant. Sound the alarm. The chariots and the horsemen are ready. My angels are ready with their sickle to trust in, in. To bring in my harvest. Prepare your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw it nigh, saith the Holy Spirit. And saints of God, when the Spirit of the Lord, when the Holy Spirit began to, began to speak to me, this morning concerning that. 
It was with great trembling and great tears that I wrote as the Spirit of God led me. Redeem the time, brothers and sisters. The Lord is drawing, the time is drawing near. Redeem the time. Don't, uh, don't worry about stuff. Don't worry about, yes, money answer at all things. But the Bible says, where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And your treasure, your heart's supposed to be on the Lord. We're supposed to be loving the Lord thy God, loving our neighbor as thyself. So let this time be a time where we redeem the time. And we have gotten a, a, a great opportunity. We have gotten a great opportunity that the Lord has allowed everything to be on a pause. That we as believers, and don't, you don't worry about who don't get it uh, and they're getting it and stuff like that. You make sure you get it. You make sure you pull out, let's, let's pull out the logs from our eyes and, for, uh, and just put the side of splint from the neighbor's eyes and the other person's eyes for now. And let's pull out the log from our eyes. Let's make sure, make our calling and election sure. Let's make sure that when the trump of God is sounded uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first uh, and they that are alive will be caught up with him in the air. And two shall be in the bed and one shall go. Two shall be in the field and one shall go. God knew time, saints of God. God knew that there are time in one part of the world that they will be sleeping and another part of the world they'll be working, saints of God. God knew time because he made time, saints of God. So let's make our calling and election sure. Let's prepare ourselves uh, to meet our Savior. You don't have to do anything, activate that. Uh, but you, act, you prepare yourself, saints of God. Check, let's check ourselves. Let's make sure that we are treating each other with moral decency. Let's make sure that we are not forgetting our first, what Jesus said, the first commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our soul. Let's, not make, let make, let's make sure that we are not forgetting the commandment. The Jesus said, by this you will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another, if you keep my commandments. So let's look at ourselves and make sure that we have love, genuine agape love for each other. And let's make sure that we are keeping the commandments of God and yet about our brothers and sisters God have heard the righteous cry of his people and I'm I'm so blessed tonight yet about because of the shifting in the atmosphere because if God be first who can be against us and the righteous people the righteous cry out have been crying out to God the righteous cry out to God and God hears them saints of God and God has heard your heart's cry and God has heard your heart's cry people God has heard your hearts cry saints praise God and I'm praying with you all now and that was my introduction if I was going to preach praise God and if you are not able to watch the entire video you can stop it pause it and go back But brothers and sisters, I am crucified with Christ. Never left I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ that liveth in me. We may not have been able or, or, or able to gather. We will not have been, we may not be able to gather like this Sunday as Mother's Day, as we normally do. And the mothers in this church know that uh, doesn't matter how much mothers it have in the church, as the years gone by, the mothers increase in the church. Uh, we, you, the mothers know that we do our best to give them something of uh, substance, bless them with something. And uh, we are not able to do that this year, but we will do something to, for you all mothers. And the mothers and the women know also that even though that there are women and young ladies that are not mothers, we know we give them the same gift that we bless the mothers with also, because they are a young lady or they are a woman, and we may not be able to do that this year, but we are gonna we're gonna keep that in mind to do that when we are able to gather together, we are gonna do something special for you all mothers, for you all women of God and young ladies and little girls, we are gonna do something special for you all at Hope Evangelistic Center. 
Richmond Hill, Queens, New York. Let me just pray with you all tonight. I felt in my spirit, we will see the victory. We will see the victory. You will see the victory. That's the song Brother James played earlier. We will see the victory. He said we will praise a hallelujah. Then we will see the victory. I sense in my spirit tonight that there's a breaking forth. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. Saints of God. There's a breaking forth. Like a breaking forth of water. And you will recover all. You may not be able, saints of God. Some of you are mourning the loss of a loved one. And you are, you, you'll get over. You'll get over. You will get over. You might be wounded, but you'll get over. God will keep you. God loves you. God will, God's, the, spirit, the word of God says that God will comfort those that mourn. Give yourself the time to mourn. Don't keep it in. Let it go. Yes, that loved one will always be a part. In your, have a special place in your heart. But give your time to mourn and let God heal your heart. Let God comfort you. And mothers, as I said to you all mothers and fathers, those of you that have been praying for your spouse and for your children and for your grandchildren, I say, I declare tonight as I heard from the Spirit of God, the Lord have heard your hearts cry. You are going to begin to see change in your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren. You begin to, you'll begin to see change in your spouse. The Lord have heard your hearts cry, brother and sister. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says to tell his children, to tell his church, for a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come near to you. For no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, said the Spirit of God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that are under the sound of my voice. Lord God, you know them by name and by nature, God. And Lord God, you know what they are facing right now, God. Some of them are facing fears. Ah, fear not, Moses said to the people at the Red Sea. Fear not, fear not, saints of God. Fear not, the horse shall rise against me. The word of God says, I will not fear. The horse shall encamp against me. I will not fear because God is with you. And they that are with you are more than them that are against you, saints of God. For the word of God says he will give his angels charge over you. To bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. They that fear the Lord and the angels of the Lord and them them that wrong about them that fear him. And they deliver them. The Lord is your deliverer. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your healer. The Lord is your way maker. Yerabosha. I heard in my spirit. Uh, the Lord is making ways where there seem to be nowhere. Increase, Yerabosha. Increase is coming. Revival is coming. I saw a fire lit in the church. Uh, and the fire is the revival. Yerabosha, the revival of his church. Uh, and the fire is lit in the church. The fire is lighting in each one of you all as saints of God individually. The fire is being lit in God's congregation. How beautiful, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the ointment that ran down on air from Aaron's head unto his bed and unto his skirts. The Lord is uniting the church. For one can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. Ah, Yerosha, the fire of the Spirit of God is coming upon His church, coming upon His people. And Father, I bless everyone. I thank you for them. I release your anointing and your power upon them. I declare that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. I declare Yerabosha, I destroy the altars that the enemy has built up against them. And I declare the favor of God be upon them. I declare the blessings of the Lord be upon your people. I declare the word of God that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face uh, shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Uh, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord preserve you unto the coming of his son Jesus. Amen. And amen. I thank God for healing. Just place your hands right now where you, those of you that are, that are praying for a healing, place your hands right now on that part of your body and I'll pray with you. Father, right now, I release your anointing for I declare your word that the yokes are destroyed because of your anointing. 
I destroy the powers of darkness over your people. I declare be loosed from the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of weakness and pain, the spirit of that disease. I declare right now be loosed from the spirit of infirmity and be healed in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure is getting normal. Disease being dissolved. Thank you God for restoring the body, for restoring the soul God. Thank you Lord God for healing but for by the stripes you were healed God sent his word and healed your disease and Lord I thank you for provision I bless you all and I seal you all under the blood of Jesus seal you all with the seal of the spirit of God in the name of Jesus Amen our number here at uh, Hope Evangelistic Center in Richmond Hill, Queens, New York is the office is 929-218-7122 uh, the mobile app for giving as you are able is Chase Mobile App and Zelly Quick Pay at uh, Hope Evangelic Center at gmail.com. Uh, please like and share if you are blessed. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Hope Evangelic Center. Praise God. The Lord bless you all. I love you all. I thank God for you all. Please remember to tune in Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, there's a special Mother's Day um, message. Um, that the Lord may give to myself or Pastor Fazida, we we'll see how the Lord lead us. Prepare your hearts to receive a special Mother's Day blessing. Praise the fathers, we didn't forget you all also, but just prepare your hearts. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. Thank God for you all. Praise God. Amen.